Welcome to Talking Baseball. We are very excited for the interview we have on today's episode. Walker Bueller. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Talking Baseball. My name is Jimmy. We got Trevor. We got Jake. Producer BBD's here, and we just wrapped up an hour-long conversation with stud starting pitcher Walker Bueller for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Trev, how are you doing today? I'm glowing. Yes. You guys knew I was looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. And really, it, it kind of surpassed my expectations. The kid has a glow about him, an aura, an air of confidence that you need to be as good of a pitcher as he is. And uh, I was just, I was happy how everything turned out. He told some really funny stories, um, but it was a big interview for me, and I think we did a good job. For the people just listening and not watching, Jake fake ate his tie. He kind of did eat his tie and then spit it out. But now I'm worried you hurt your neck again. I, uh, man, I get, sometimes I get these weird neck cramps and by pretending to eat my tie, I, uh, I just gave myself a neck cramp. So that's, that's a little bit in my life. And for those listening and following, uh, we did record this on Jeff Passon day. So that's, that's why I'm wearing a tie. Um, yeah, I think, uh, what, what Trevor said, um, yeah, he's got, uh, that, the confidence of a, of a young dude that's done what he's done in major league baseball, like not above, not less. Like he's, he's right there. He's locked in. Um, and he's got like a little, uh, a little bit of the pitcher's quirk with mixed with, you know, he's, he's from Kentucky and, you know, he, he had a couple good jokes through there that were pretty, you know, he stayed deadpan and he, he stayed on the course and it was like, yeah, okay. I, I get it. I, I'm in. I like it. Yeah. All right, let's just throw it right to the interview, and then we'll come back, do a little wrap-up session afterwards, have some fun, do things, talk. Here's Walker Bueller. We are joined by one of my Vandy brethren, Walker Bueller. Walker, how you doing, man? Good. How you guys doing? We're good. Doing man. well. I'll, I'll correct Jake right away. Okay. His girlfriend went to Vandy. And he's gone to some reunions, and now he thinks he's welcome in the club. And Dansby Swanson yeah. gave him a hard no, yeah. you're not in the club. Yeah, you're, you're not a Commodore by association, but it's all right. Yeah, I, uh, we, we're off to a tough start. I lied about that. We spelled your <laughs> name wrong in the Zoom. Uh, yeah, man, I, I went to, like, the five-year reunion thing this year, and it was nuts. It was, it was kind of awesome. So uh, keep – and I'll just kind of, I'm just going to kind of keep prodding at the Vandy guys until someone lets me in. Do I need to go after Corbin, or what should I do? Well, I think that'd probably be the toughest sell. <laughs> oh, shit. Pri okay. Price might let you in. I think yeah, Price is – He might. Yeah. Okay. He's I'll, a pretty I'll nice guy. Okay, David, then. Good. Isn't, isn't Kemp a, a, a Vandy guy? Tony, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and he's short like us, Jake. So maybe he'll let you in. It'll okay. be like, you know, it'll be really test the bond between short guys and Vandy guys. What's stronger? <laughs> <laughs> just pushing the envelope everywhere. Walker, enough about me. How you doing, man? I'm just hanging out at home, kind of trying to stay in shape, trying to stay ready. Hopefully, you know, we'll get to go so get going soon. How is uh, – you're in Kentucky, you told us, Lexington. I mean, it's a beautiful time of year there right now, right? Is that yeah, we're almost, we're almost to the good spot. It's, it's kind of – it doesn't know – the weather here doesn't know if it's Arizona or Antarctica. It's 55 and nice and pretty, and then it'll be 32. So uh, it's like 50 and a little rainy here today. Well, in, in Walkerville, which is Los Angeles, that's what I'm going to call it from now on, <laughs> Walkerville, it's 71 degrees. Mm. It's beautiful. So this, this whole city is waiting for you to get back, man. I know, man. I'm, we're missing it. Where do you, where are you, obviously don't give specifics, so where do you stay in LA? Uh, my first, my first two years, last year was the first time I actually got my own place, but I did some Airbnbs. Uh, my first year in Marina Del Rey, so nice. I liked it down there and got a place down there last year. And then um, this year we found a, a house to rent in the Hollywood Hills, so we are missing right. out on 
but we wanted to be a yeah. little bit closer to the field this year. Yeah, Marina's a little bit of a drive. Oh, yeah, a little 45-minute action, but I loved it. I loved it down there. I'm telling you right now, this is like um, Los Angeles at its best because nobody's driving. Mm-hmm. So that's the worst part about L.A. is yeah, it's the traffic. Crazy. You can actually go places now, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm in the I'm in the San Fernando Valley, and I could get down to Marina in 20 minutes. Yeah, and that's just wow. something that nobody, everyone listening to this is like, shut up, Trevor, ask yeah. something different. But I'm just saying, it's you understand, it's a beautiful thing. I tell everyone around here that everyone always asks me about it. And I'm like, listen, you can do one thing a day. You got to pick one thing that you want to do because <laughs> it's, it's going to be two hours each way, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, we learned that the hard way with like three things planned going like through the valley and all that stuff. It was terrible. Yeah, but that'll happen. Are you doing any uh, throwing while you're like at home? You, you got a spot of the high school field or, uh, you know, backyard? Yeah, or? Uh, one of my best friends is a, a Division three coach at a little school here called Transylvania. So I've been making him come and throw with me. We've been going to – we jump around spots so that we don't get caught. But – uh yeah we've been playing catch here and there and, and throwing some bullpens and stuff like that is it is it all on you or have you been getting a lot of stuff from like your pitching coaches and organization or, or how's that yeah, we've gotten you know we've gotten our throwing program and and you know as we do every winter kind of get a program and then make it your own and, and that's what we've been doing luckily we have a couple of pretty good pitchers and, and guys around here trevor Gott um is from here robbie ross is around um, I'm forgetting somebody, but we've got a good little, good little group that we kind of get together and throw bullpens and, and do that kind of stuff. Well, what was the vibe with, uh, with the Dodgers when all this has gone down or is there any like team group chat? Because I mean, the Dodgers are in a crazy situation with, you know, you guys are in the biggest open window right now, like a, a favorite, have a hell of a team. You get Price, you get Mookie. I'm sure spring, like how was spring? It had to be a pretty upbeat and happy spring training, right? Well, it, was, it was exciting. Obviously, we were just kind of all getting getting to know each other well and, and kind of gearing up, and then they shut it down. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, we're in a tough spot, obviously, having Mookie for the one year and, um, you know, DP for a couple more after that, but you know, we were excited and, and getting to know those guys and, and kind of figuring out our, our little roles within the clubhouse and then it all kind of poofed away. So, uh, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, to getting back out there with that group and, and obviously, um, uh, you know, want to, want to hold up a trophy at the end. Oh man. I'm, uh, <laughs> I told you I'm from LA. So all, I, you know, all my friends are Dodgers fans and that's all we ever talk about. Yep. Is a Dodgers. They ask me questions. I tell them I have no idea about anything about the Dodgers. But to to go to the World Series like that and come up a little short, then you add Mookie. It's like you got to be Jones and to to get back out there. Like everybody I talk to, they're like, once you get to the playoffs and you do stuff like that, that's the only baseball that means anything to you anymore. Yeah, you feel yeah, that 18, way. Eighteen was definitely a, a big experience for me and kind of changes the way that you look at everything and, and obviously that being my first real year was kind of made it even, even that much more special. And, um, you know, last year losing to Washington, you know, you always want to lose to the, to the team that wins. So, um, you know, they just got on a run and, and played really good baseball down the stretch. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, it's so cliche. Everyone says, you know, reload instead of rebuild and all that stuff. But, it's really what we've we've done, and and we like our roster a lot, and um, you know the depth of it is obviously probably second to none in in the league. So uh, yeah, we were we were really excited. I, I don't think we're any less excited now. We're just a little bit a little bit delayed. Yeah. Speaking of the postseason stuff, I mean, I like well, I love watching you pitch because I, the word I always use is moxie. It just seems like you're in control of the game. And then you got the, you you let the emotions out after the inning and it's a big release. Like I love it. You you pitched in the tiebreaker. I want to go into a bunch of these and a lot of postseason starts. You're also in the World Series in college as well. Has big mm-hmm. games just been finding you. Like in high school, were you in big playoff games as well? Because it feels um, like big moments chase you around. Yeah, I don't know. I I think a big part of it is I've just always thrown strikes and, and I think coaches have been like, all right, these big games, you know, we're not going to walk our way to losing this game. So um, I did that once in Atlanta, but um, <laughs> no, you know, I think I've always tried to try to believe that if you can be 
good 50% of the time in big games, you're, you're going to be fine. And that's kind of what happened to me in the College World Series, that I had two really good outings and two really bad outings. Um, but you learn from that stuff. And, um, you know, the first playoffs was, was kind of a, a rocky road, but I got better as, as the playoffs went and got more comfortable. And, um, you know, I just don't think anything really prepares you for what the adrenaline feels like in a, in a playoff start, in a playoff atmosphere. So um, definitely takes a little bit of adjusting, but, uh, you know, feel better about it now. Yeah, I mean your your postseason ERA is like two seven two. You're doing pretty <laughs> well. I think <laughs> I think you, you've done pretty well. And that doesn't even include the the game one sixty three against uh-huh. the Rockies, where you you pretty pretty well as well. Um, what about uh, the no hitter? That's like the no hitter combined no hitter first in mm-hmm. Dodgers history. What was the emotions when you realized you might not be able to finish this one? Yeah, I. There was there were some discussions and some you know heated words coming both ways, but uh, when they told me I was coming out, but it was my third start in the big leagues, and and I kind of knew I was going to be on some sort of limitation throughout the year, and um, you know I think had it been ten starts later, it would have been a lot more heated, but I think at that point you're still just really happy to be there and and to even have thrown six innings, and um, you know it was kind of a, it was a really cool accomplishment, and I don't think at the time I really soaked it in the way that I wish I would have or, or really understood how cool it was. But um, obviously something we'll look back on. Uh, Did you... enough, enough of this oh. taster stuff. I'm, I'm sick of. <laughs> oh, I got so much. I got so I'm, much I'm more. I'm sick bro. of them tasting you. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 I wanted to ask because I, I always find it's funny. I, I, I love looking through guys just different years. And I mean, man, you, you've shoved college pros, blah, blah, blah. We get it. Uh, 2017, when you get your cup of coffee and you get those yeah. eight games coming out and you get hit a little bit. I mean, do you, yeah. do you look back at that as something that was good for you? Like, did that bring you into the off season and you were like, Hey, I still got work to do. Or are you like, no, nah, I just, <laughs> I just missed a couple pitches or um, what, what you, what, what happened then? No. Well, I will in my defense say that I didn't throw as bad as the numbers might suggest. Okay. I did give up a grand slam and yeah, Jake. Out in a game. Um, similar to the playoff numbers. I think it's a pretty similar situation. Um, but definitely humbling to walk out of any season with a 80 or A or whatever I had. So I think it was a little bit of both. I think at first I was initially really upset and disappointed. And, um, you know, I walked in there and from, you know, from the staff and, and the organization I had a chance to, to make the playoff roster if, if I threw the ball well. And, um, felt like I squandered that opportunity and, um, you know, then to watch them all the way through and, you know, coming off of, of having numbers like that or that month, I don't know if I could have helped, but, you know, if, if you're competitive, I think you always feel like you could have helped. And um, so then you walk back into 18 and I was the first cut in spring training and, you know, I thought I was going to make the team and didn't because, you know, I needed to go to AAA and get a couple starts and, and that kind of stuff. I, I think, was all humbling and then you do get the chance and things start going well and and you get more and more acclimated I think it's kind of all part of the process you know in this game everyone's going to get humbled at some point and and I'm just glad it happened early and and could learn from it instead of you know I'd I'd rather it happen then than it happened now yeah I want to go to that game 163 like obviously you had a great year uh leading up to that game but I've been telling my buddies I said this is the guy with the Dodgers that you give the ball to in a big game. And, and you look at that, that rotation. I mean, there's obviously a lot of depth there. You have Clayton Kershaw and yeah. the trio of other guys that you have in the rotation as well. But when, when Dave Roberts comes up to you and says, you know, do or die game, you got the ball. Is that something you expected or were you surprised by that? Um, no. Well, I think what's kind of, forgotten about that whole thing is it was played pretty quick it might have been the day after the season or something like that so um you know more than anything I think it fell on on my turn through the rotation um but you know it was nice I think looking back on it and and when we talked about it it was like a playoff game and and I think for me to have that experience was was great and and I think it was a calculated risk by by the organization of this goes really poorly we've still got these other guys that can get us through that wild card game. Or if it goes well, we don't have to play it. And Bueller's got a playoff experience start under his belt. And, and luckily it went well. The, uh, the post game comments did not go very well for me. 
I don't know if you guys saw those videos, but I may have cussed I'm on live TV it. on the field, <laughs> which didn't go very well. But no, I mean it was all I good, man. I, I'm glad we we got through it. That that staff in '18 that you joined when you finally came up. I mean, it's got Kershaw in there, obviously. Also had Rich Hill and Alex Wood, older guys. Like you joined a, a kind of veteran staff. They're all mm-hmm. having decent years. And Kershaw, I'm, I mean, he's Kershaw. Right. Was there any like holy shit moments with him, or you know, watching him work? Any aha moments? Did uh, is he is he giving you any tips and advice that really like resonated? Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would probably go back to 17 more so because I, I had never, I didn't go to big league camp in 17. So I made my debut before I had been to big league camp. So I didn't really know these guys very well. Um, you know, the closest thing that I had known with Kirsch was when he made a rehab in 17 when I was in AAA. So, you know, hadn't been around him much, obviously being a pitcher growing up in the era that I did Clayton Kershaw was kind of more than, more than a player. Um, so it was, you know, it was, it was cool. And then to get up in 18 and you've actually met everyone before and, and things like that, it certainly makes it a lot easier. I, I got, I got two Kershaw questions for you. Okay. I'm coming loaded right here. All right. These are hard. These are going to be hard hitting. <laughs> you said he made a rehab start in AAA. Mm-hmm. What did he buy for spread? Oh. Better think, be good. Clayton. Have you ever been to Oklahoma be city? There's a little steakhouse there called, um, I think it's called Mickey Mantles. Okay. I think that's what he got, but I'm not 100%. We, all, we had a couple guys down there um, while I was there. Gonzo was there. He bought a bunch of good spreads. The um, best. Andre Ethier was there. Chris Hatcher had been there. So we were pretty lucky in the, in the food department, but I'm pretty sure that um, he had done Mickey Mantles. You know, it was one of the coolest moves that I saw when we were down there. Justin Masterson mm-hmm. was on our team that whole year. He was, just a, he was playing in AAA for us. Mm. He would just get fed up at some point about the food and just buy spread because he was there. Uh, because <laughs> it was rehab. And so he did Mickey Mantles a couple of times as well. That's awesome. I love that. I did the same thing. My last year split the year in AAA yeah. and the food is so bad. I think you guys probably have it better than most organizations, we, but we, we were doing pretty good. And Massey just at some point was like, no, nope, not doing that. You can only have dry chicken breast and like steamed broccoli <laughs> so many days in a row. I would always do pizza for the boys, like on road trips, yeah. just get the pizza in guys. We need it. Yeah. We yeah. had a, we had a pretty good tradition there on that team of, of buying some pizzas before the bus rides. Yeah. That was our big deal. Who's All the right. uh, 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 on this current Dodgers? Jake, I got team. another question here, bro. Yeah, two Kershaw questions. That, that, was, that was one question. That was oh one. My God. Yeah. <laughs> this one's even harder. This one's even tougher. Oh yeah. wow! Wow. Question number right. two, Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> what are those Skechers cleats like? I gotta know. Are they are they just Under Armour cleats with the Skecher logo, or what are we doing there? Because that's fully, that's. Listen, I don't want to mess up his deal here. I don't want to mess up <laughs> anyone's thing. They are. They are a Skechers product. I do know that. Okay. Are they going to hold they, up through a season or what? Because I'm worried about well, that as a Dodgers only, you know, guy. He's the only Skechers guy, so I'm pretty sure that he gets about as many Skechers cleats as he can ask for. Okay. The second part of that, <laughs> they are eerily similar to the Under Armour cleats. That <laughs> we'll so, just leave it at that. Similar. Yes. They look like they took the Under Armour sign and just kind of swarfed it into an S. <laughs> they're very, very similar. Thank you for answering that. Yeah. I also told him when he brought up the idea of the Skechers, I'm a big shoe guy. I really care about my cleats. I asked him if he would rather have the money for the Skechers deal or the respect of his peers. <laughs> and he chose the Skechers cleats. Show me that money, baby. respect it, baby. So this, if the sketcher rep comes to you, it's a tougher decision. It will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a discussion. Oh, not a man. discussion. Any oh. any further questions, Mr. Plouffe? You're good done, for now. Baby. You're good. That's all I need uh, to know. I I wanted to ask you, Walker, and it's kind of what we're all missing, man. I I know Plouffe was tweeting about it today, but you you we miss doing things and being being with the guys, whether it's you know, playing for the Dodgers or whatever the hell we do here. But um, who's, Watching. Uh, who, yeah, who, who are the guys on the Dodgers? I know we're, we're Yankee fans and Tommy Canley out of their bullpen. Like, he's the energy ball on that team. Like, mm-hmm. he keeps them 
going through 162. We talked to Sean Doolittle, and he was talking about the guys on that team, Para, and some of the other guys that just yeah. kept the energy up. Who are the dudes on the Dodgers that are kind of the the pulse of the clubhouse? Uh, yeah, we've got an interesting group. We got a lot of good. We don't, you know, we have our leaders of our team, JT and Kirsch, and and we all kind of know that. But the rest of us are all kind of. You know, nobody's super shy. Seager's a little shy compared to, to some guys. Um, but then you've got guys like Kike who, who are not shy. Um, and it seems like every little facet of our team in the bullpen, there's some shyer guys and some outgoing guys. It's, it's all pretty balanced, I would say. I'd say our, our most eccentric group is the outfielders probably with Belly and Jock. And um, Pollock is, is the, you know, more veteran mature presence of those three and then adding Mookie in there obviously he's a he's a pretty entertaining fellow as well so you know I'd say we're we're a pretty balanced group that outfit yeah. is a joke That's pretty I ridiculous. mean Bellinger Mookie and Pollock or Jock yeah and then CT and Kike oh yeah I mean <laughs> my goodness dude silly you can say the same about our infield, and, and you can say some things about our staff. <laughs> They're too, good, so. too. They're all Dude, good, man. Dude, I went – so I went – I was <laughs> – this sounds ridiculous now if you're just, like, looking at me and what we're doing here, but I was going to join the organization as front office PD. I don't know what. I went, yeah. to, I went to Instructional League this last year for the Dodgers, and not only are you guys just stacked on your major league side, but you guys have guys coming up, too. Yeah, we got there's some. like a secret sauce down there, man. That just yeah. you guys keep growing from within. Obviously, I was really impressed with the facilities, and I knew a bunch of the coaches and and, mm-hmm. and stuff. But what, I mean, like, what, what do you think it is? Do you think it's like they've drafted well, or yeah. is the player development just that much better? Um, well, we eat organic, so that's a that's <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> uh, drink a lot of essential water. We have mm. all sorts of. It was pretty show. Drinks. Um, but no, I, I do think that we draft really well. And, um, you know, we've gotten a lot of players that are good players that we've made better. Um, you know, you look at guys like Max Muncy and Chris Taylor and, and guys that have been to the big leagues, obviously very talented, very good baseball players. And I think kind of unlock them. And, and I think when you do that to guys, people are going to think that we developed them and, and we didn't, we just simply helped them in their career and obviously those guys both signed extensions this off season and, and we're happy to have both of them. Right. So, but we didn't draft them, but also we have drafted well. Corey's been unbelievable as a first round pick belly jock. Those guys weren't first round picks, but obviously impact players now. And um, I think as an organization, if, if you hit with most of your first round picks and then steal two or three valuable players in the rest of the draft, you're going to be in a, in a pretty good spot. And, and I think we've, we've been on a pretty good run at doing that. Yeah. I mean, Justin Turner is another example. I mean, I, right. I played against Justin for a while, you know, Baltimore, New York, and then he's the king of LA now, man. And yeah. I'm so happy for him uh, um, a, because that means he's player. from LA. What happened here? Did I lose you guys? We got, we got you. Okay. Can you hear us still? Yeah, you're good. I just okay. it, it like went to the background. I don't know what happened. Oh. I'm good. I want to talk about you with a bat in your hand. You tweeted out that you couldn't hit 200 in double A <laughs> watching the last dance talking about Michael Jordan. But hey, you hit 168 in 2018. And then last season, you popped a homer. Do you yeah, like well, hitting? Last season was atrocious at the plate. <laughs> but uh, no. I, one homer, though. I did hit a homer, but I think that ruined the rest of my season. I think I was trying to do it the whole time <laughs> after that. It's a little Which addicting. Will happen. It, it, it does happen. Um, and I also gave up a four spot right after the homer. So the homer <laughs> is not as sweet a memory as one, one may think. <laughs> There's a, it a premier name you knocked it off of, at least. Who was it? I got Waka. Yeah. Wow. It's a good name to get. Yeah, it's a nice, well, nice shot in too. Clubhouse because him and Stripling are big buddies from Texas A&M. So, if there was anyone, it would it would probably <laughs> be him. You are you gonna so that you know the proposal? Well, DHs. If the DH comes, are are you gonna be more happy? You don't have to hit anymore, or are you gonna miss being able to pitch to pitchers more? 
I, I like hitting. I like throwing to pitchers. I, I love it. I get that the game at some point is probably going to go to the DH, but I like it. And, and you know, I think it's it, – I just think it's a fun part of the game personally. When you – when you if a pitcher gets a hit off you, are you, like, gripping the bat tighter in the box when you come up against him? <laughs> I mean, that's got to just be natural, right? Um, yeah. I mean, you don't like to give up hits to pitchers. I can't remember. Syndergaard – smoked a ball off me this year which sucked I think he hit like 106 down the line um but it didn't really matter how hard I grabbed the bat against him I don't think I was gonna too much <laughs> Syndergaard's got a bad body he needs to work on that yeah it's really tough to look at <laughs> I get scary. that that dude's scary big he is big <laughs> I got yeah. a I got I got a good one for you here because I don't know if we should refer to you as Walker or Commissioner Bueller, mm-hmm. as you are the commissioner of the Dodgers Fantasy League. Fantasy I was. Football. I don't know if I will have that title. I don't think Uh-oh. I did a very good job. It's a, oh, wow. Let me tell you this, dude. It is a thankless job. Anyone that's ever done it knows. It's just, you're just going to get complaints. This is true. So I am in a fantasy league with uh, Turner. Okay. And it's like kind of like a league-wide – fantasy league he's pretty good he had a really good team this year um who who are like the top players in that dodgers league you know maybe maybe rank the top three for us if you could oh this is gonna ruffle some feathers yeah. probably. um ross stripling has won the past two years i believe oh but he is sponsored by clayton kershaw <laughs> I don't believe that Clayton has a lot to do with the fantasy football decisions on a day-to-day basis. Interesting. But Stripling is also a stockbroker in the off seasons. Okay. So it does make sense that he has some natural inclination to be good at fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Is he number uh, one? I think as it stands right now, he has to be. Okay. Barnes is very invested. Very, very invested. Um, you know, there, there aren't really many bad players in our league. I would say that I would be considered one of the bottom third players, but I had Saquon get hurt on me last year, which Mm. causes some, causes some desperation moves to occur. So yeah, I made bad moves. Did I know they were bad moves? Yes. You know, (laughs) it wasn't out of it, you know, it was the situation I was in. If you lose a first rounder, it's going to be an uphill battle, no doubt about Especially it. Especially number one pick, and then McCaffrey. And, you know, it's just it was a tough year for me. Is there any collusion going on? Is there any like, hey, we need to kick this guy out of the league? This guy's this guy's not setting his lineup. These two are working together. Um, yeah, I think I think what has happened recently is we've kicked the front office guys more or less out. Okay, um, good. Friedman, Friedman That's and smart. Farhan, when he was with us, they were you know, threats, perennial threats. <laughs> um, I personally would like to get them all out of there, but, um, you know, if it's 10 man league without them or 12 man with them, everyone's going to take 12 with them. I agree. So that's brutal. You can't get a trade offer from your GM or owner. <laughs> like what are you supposed <laughs> yeah. to do? Yeah. But they're so egregious that you can, you can say, okay. No, you know? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's a test. <laughs> the yeah. GM making fantasy trades. Yeah. It's just kind of like, hey, man, this is what you do, though. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's a, it's, it is an advantage for them. That's like yeah. us doing a fantasy podcast, like, in our head. I don't even go. It's just – that's your that, real that, job. That doesn't make any sense right there. That's his real job, and then he's doing it, like, in a fake world as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> crazy. Wow. Deep end uh, thoughts. Uh, Walker, when we had Jack Flaherty on, I asked him – when he's in the middle of a stretch like he was at the end of last season and you were at the end of the 2018 season where you're just dominating the second half of that season, when you take the ball, how much is your game plan changing per batter? Or are you just like, I have my A-plus stuff. I'm going to throw the pitches I want to throw. Okay. And Jack said that he doesn't, he doesn't care about scouting reports when he's feeling the way he feels. And he just like, I'm going to throw my game. He can't hit it. So how's it for you? Are you going batter to batter? Yeah, I mean, I, I think 
whatever routine got you to that point, you're going to try and stick to, right? So if you're really scouting or really deep diving guys or, or whatever, you're going to try and keep doing that. Um, I would also say to Jack's point, he has one of the best catchers of all time behind the plate that probably doesn't take scouting lightly ever. So, um, you know, I think when you get in those root, those, you know, rhythms and grooves and, and, whatever you want to call it. I think you just try and recreate it as long as you can. Yeah. And last year I was looking at the pitch, <laughs> pitch mix for you and it looked like the fastball ticked up a little bit. Was that by design or just that high fastball is now working so much better than it? It seems like each year that high fastball works better. Um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't go into a year trying to say, Hey, here are my percentages and here's what I want to do. I do think that, um, you know, the swings in, in our game are becoming more uphill and, and home run oriented. And I think every year you're going to see guys throw the ball up in the zone more. Um, but I've always been kind of traditional in the way that I think, you know, I, I want to get strikes early, low and low in the zone and, and then move up later. Um, you know, it kind of is what it is. It's just part of the game now. And, um, you know, I would say it's mostly dictated on what was called or, or I was in, you know, more – more pro pitcher counts. So I'm trying to throw the ball up in the zone more because I'm trying to punch guys out. Makes yeah, that's sense. a horrible pitch for hitters. Just <laughs> just so you know, just keep throwing it up there because if you look at just like heat zones for any hitter, yeah. that top is usually blue. Not too yeah, many guys up there have that red hot zone. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the more fun ones to throw. It's a little <laughs> scary for a while because if you miss or if they get it, it's usually going to go a long way. So um there's also a weird illusion where every ball that comes off the bat that's a high heater at least to me looks like it's coming right at my forehead <laughs> but i think it's kind of more incentive to throw good ones more often i'm i'm kind of fascinated with the the kind of catching uh change that's been going on as for catchers um uh-huh. where they're starting with the glove on the ground and kind of working from down mm-hmm. up to steal some of those strikes I haven't pitched in a long time. Okay, I pitched in high school, and but I remember my bad. Please I laugh good. at him. It's Walker. pretty good. <laughs> Please laugh at him. I have a point to that. All right, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I remember throwing to certain catchers and not liking it, throwing to some catchers and liking it. Yep. What is that like for you? I mean, are you okay with like them having that target down and having them come up late with it? Do you just focus on a different target? Like, how does that work for you? Um. You know, I, I think obviously everyone wants to throw to a target or, or whatever, but in, in all honesty, I think for me for a long time, it's been more of a feel of I'm trying to throw this ball on the outer third and the target kind of is what it is. Um, especially once you get to professional baseball, you're going to be throwing to so many different catchers all the time that um, you in some way can kind of push that out of your head. Also, the way that I my delivery, I go over the – over the head with my hands so there is like a pretty decent amount of time that I'm not even looking at home so whatever they do in between kind of is is their thing they're professionals and and some of the best in the world at what they do so um you know if they're helping us then then we're good with it okay have you ever had uh I I love the hands over the head that's uh, Trevor's talking about his high school delivery that's my wiffle ball league delivery um what um had had coaches tried to take that away from you at all? Because I feel like a lot of coaches try to nowadays because it's kind of the less motion you're doing. But I guess if you're doing what you're doing, they let it ride. Yeah, you know, that was something that I put in. This is actually kind of a weird story. I put it in right before my last college start. So I threw in a regional game. At Vandy, we won that game, swept Super Regional, so I didn't have to pitch. And then my first start in Omaha that year was 17 days later, and I came back with a whole new delivery. So I've always kind of tinkered with it that way. Mm. Um, And then I had a year off and just kind of forgot to do it for a while and then (laughs) rediscovered it and and kind of been doing it ever since. Yeah. Did you meet resistance in the minors? Because, you know, uh, like David Cohen always writes about how people hated his delivery in the minor leagues and he ran into so many coaches trying to, 
to change. Yeah. He coiled his wrist, um, and they yeah. tried to change it forever. And he was like, that's how I pitch. Um, you know, I, I was pretty lucky and going back to the Dodgers player development stuff, they didn't ever really try and change a whole lot of what I was doing. I think to them, you know, to the organization, I had already been out a year. So our first round pick, we just let's let him go, see what he can do. And, and people didn't really mess with him much outside of, you know, scouting report or, or being a pro or finding a routine. It was more of that stuff than, than my delivery, I guess. All right, let's go back to some more fun stuff because that's really what I'm interested in here. LA, big, <laughs> big city of stars. Yep. I mean, people come all the time to your games. Who's like the person that you met and you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like that's so-and-so. Um, for me personally, have you ever watched the show The League? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Rafi was there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool. That was me. your guy? Rafi well, that would, that would be like the one that you wouldn't expect. Like, you know, we've <laughs> met some cool people. Um, obviously, Kobe, when he came, yeah. um, was really cool. And, um, you know, obviously a sad, sad deal, but yeah. a really cool memory that, that during the World Series in 2018, I met him the day after probably the biggest game of my life. And um, that was pretty cool. And, and then this year – um Kevin Hart and one of the Kardashians took BP with us at one point so that was kind of cool were they uh, good no really bad <laughs> um Triple G came in Anthony Davis and for me that was awesome because I'm from Lexington and obviously played at Kentucky nice. so nice. I was wearing one of my UK basketball shirts um which was pretty funny so that's awesome um you know we get a lot of people come in and um, you know, I think the funniest thing is how in awe all of them are of us in some way. Like, we're like, no, you're such and such. And they're like, <laughs> we're in your locker. It's just a weird, I mean, you've, you've seen that with people coming through locker rooms. It's weird how like out of their element they are, even when they're an athlete and they're in a locker room. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's, they're around 30 guys, whatever in that locker room it could be intimidating. And plus dude, you're the Dodgers. You know, I played mostly with the Twins. No one, I mean, there's some people who are big Twins fans, but Dodgers. Prince come by? What's that? Prince come by? No, man, but we, I was there uh, when Prince uh, passed away, and that was crazy, man. He was really beloved there. Who else is famous from Minnesota? <laughs> Nick Swardson, who's become one of my buddies, and he's like the best. <laughs> yeah, he's in your fantasy league, right? Yeah, nice, he's hilarious. Nice, Paul. Nice, Paul. Yeah, but LA is different. I mean, uh, when you're in LA, it's the Dodgers and the Lakers, and that's it. Well, so I can see how those you know people, especially they grew up in LA, like they know the Dodgers are. It means a lot to people out here. Yeah, I didn't even sure. realize that. Like you have celebrities coming by nonstop. Is it ever like, hey, let's close off the locker room? We don't need the Kardashians taking batting practice. With no, get the yeah. keep the Kardashians I, coming. I think the I think the sketchiest kind of, not sketchiest, but the closest to it being a problem was it was Kershaw's start day, which is kind of a legendary routine and ambiance in the locker room. It's just a different, it's a different animal on Kershaw's day. Is there no music? No, he's, he's apparently he's eased up. I believe it. It is still kind of hard to believe, but he has eased up, but he was downstairs starting his warm up, and every single Rams rookie oh. walked through the weight room, which was like, I was down there at the time working out and obviously you have no choice of the music. You know, you're putting your plates back very quietly. You're just kind of letting Kirsch <laughs> get ready to help our team win. And then you had every Rams rookie walk through and, <laughs> Oh, look at this. And all the, you know, it was, it was a little sketchy. We kind of got him out of there pretty quickly. That's hey, Kershaw, funny. he really has earned that, you know, like yeah. I feel like if people hear that story, like, oh, Kershaw's a might be a prima donna, but dude, the guy's earned it. He could do whatever he wants. And if that's what the recipe works, right? Yeah, you if that's what's what works, weird. let him do it. I know he eats the same lunch every start day because he eats it in the in the locker room. And what's crazy is how long he's like had these routines or planned to be 
as successful as he is. I, I asked him about it once, and his he makes a turkey sandwich or whatever it is, but he knew that he could get that same meal in every big league park. Perfect. So that's how it starts. Like all of his routines are based on no home bias. He wants to be the same on the road. It's just wild how, like, how much confidence you have to have to think, well, I need to do this routine that so that yeah. I can do it in every big league park. But Kirsch is also the most humble guy ever. So it, it's just really interesting how, how that routine and those routines have kind of set him up for success. I think it goes into what do I always, what's the term I always use? Decision fatigue is uh, like, they say that's the recipe, the least decisions you have to make every day. So if Kirsch, I was like, I don't have to make a decision on my food now. This is what right. I eat every start. It's yep. less time he has to think about something besides the game. That's right. like what all the crazy single-sided smart and successful people do. What's, yeah, what's see, your routine? I think, I think I'm more of a simplicity fatigue guy where I want as much going on before the game as I possibly can. <laughs> um, I – I will. I have an embarrassing story about myself that I will share with you guys. All right. All right. So traditionally, we play games at seven o'clock. On Saturdays, we play at six because we have day games. I may or may not have been playing cards up until five fifteen before I start. <laughs> when I normally start my routine at an hour and a half before. So I traditionally get, you know, the trainer stretch and all that. And I looked at the guy that works on me. I said, you have five minutes. And he said, this usually takes 30. I said, you have five. <laughs> and I threw the ball well, which is the only reason I will ever repeat that story ever again. Well, when, when you're doing it, are you like, oh, maybe I need to change my routine up a little bit. I'm throwing well tonight. No, I enjoy my routine. Most of mine is, is more of a massage, so I just kind of enjoy that and, and move on with my day. That but, sounds like a nice routine there. Yeah, you know, to get one every fifth day or really for me, everyone in the locker room will tell you I'm, I'm praying every other day rub down guy, so I'm a little bit high maintenance. But, Gotta have it. Um, you know, it was a lot easier or a lot harder to get away with that when I was a, a rookie. It, it's become a little bit more of a, oh, that's his routine. Do you have well, any other superstitions? I wouldn't even call that a superstition. You know, there's yeah, some little things that we do. Little things we do here and there. I've I've always traditionally worn a St. Christopher necklace. One of my grandfathers gave it to me. So I do give that to our, our strength coach before I go out. I don't wear it anymore. It started hitting me in the face all the time. <laughs> so I kind of wear that all day and then give it to him on the way out. What kind of card games are you playing? Are you a spades guy? Uh, we're a big pluck locker pluck. room. Love pluck, man. Yeah, we do some pluck and then we play cards. Who's your partner? Um, see, it's kind of a rotating partner. What we do is Jock and I play each other and we just grab partners. So he and I have little little wagers here and there on pluck games, but it's kind of whoever's ready to play that day, but it's just me versus Jock. I, I, we used to play pluck all the time. A little Queen A shifty on you, real quick. The best. <laughs> Love that. The best. I, I miss that. Now, you're, now I'm getting sentimental. Yeah. If you guys don't, if you guys out there don't know about pluck, it is one of the simplest, best card games out there, in my humble opinion. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta take it up. Never played pluck. So it's you, a it, it's a trump game, and you just, and you, and you choose trump. Yeah. There you go. So you, you pluck around a little bit. We, we know you're watching Last Dance like everyone else. Mm -hmm. what, what, else what else are you about besides baseball? What's, what's going on in the off seasons? Are you a Netflix guy? Are you, we've had a few hunters on here. What, what do you get yeah, into? I do, some, I do some duck hunting. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's the first hey. one. Hey. Oh, okay. wow. There yeah. you go. There's the little guitar we got this year from the cleveland all-star game so we're trying to make this into a little man cave up here yeah but, uh no i do a little duck hunting since the quarantine we built a deck on the back of the house so you duck hunting off the, de the deck of your house uh you could um <laughs> i live on a little bit of a golf course here so you definitely could it probably needs somebody to go out there and, and shoot some of these geese no offense to <laughs> animal lovers but uh, yeah we just kind of hang out I'm big into the horse racing 
steel, so I got to go to the Breeders' Cup last year, which was really cool. Uh, what else? Makes sense. Pretty. That's about it. That's you're right. right. You're right in horse racing country. Yeah, I live probably seven minutes from where the big sales go on, and about twelve minutes from Keeneland. So, Damn. Uh, it's kind of hard not to not to be into it when you're from here. It's crazy. Is, is that going to be a next step? Is are we going to be hearing about Walker Bueller's horses at some point? Yeah, um, I've had some opportunities to do that stuff, but you know, I think we need to wait until <laughs> you know I'm, I get a little more secure financially. <laughs> okay. Um, it is the sport of kings. So, well, let's uh, get Andrew on the it. phone right now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This guy needs a horse. Come on, Andrew. Yeah. No, it is it is pretty cool. My fiance's sister is married to a, a Hall of Fame jockey as well. So we've gotten nice. to I, I kinda more hang out in the locker room at the horse track than, than watch the races that more than I used to. Damn, jockey life. I'd love to see the inside working of that not the that's supposedly a, it's crazy. That's a crazy locker room. It's it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah i don't know if you guys have trev i don't know or jake i don't know if you've ever heard j- stories of jockey locker rooms but they're nuts go read some i've just been recruited never never been in <laughs> yeah it's a lot smaller locker room it's actually ha- exactly half the size of the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> jake you need to lose a little bit of weight before you yeah, go on horse, yeah too many carbs for me but one day how, how did vanderbilt uh become was that you i and vanderbilt the whole time out of high school or near him yeah, you know, I just kind of kind of fell in. You know, I had a, a few offers and had some, you know, stuff lined up to go and visit schools and um, went down to a camp there. They asked me to come back two weeks later. They offered me whatever they did, and I committed and canceled everything else. It just kind of felt like that was a spot. And, and then, you know, obviously going through the draft and stuff out of high school, you kind of feel like you should do this or should do that. And, um you know, at one point after, I think it was after the first, first round, I called Corbin and said, Hey man, I'm coming to school. And, and that was kind of it. So if, if you had potentially gone one, it would have been, it, it would have been a thought process at least or in the yeah, first round. I, I just know how impulsive I can be sometimes. And I figured <laughs> if I called and told him that I was coming to school, that I would feel even that much worse if I signed. So um, after the first round, I just kind of made the call and, and stuck with it. Worked out. Got, I mean, yeah, your team has a lot of guys in the bigs right now. I mentioned Swan's, uh, uh, Dan's to be at the beginning. Tony oh, Kemp as well. Friend of the pod, yeah. Uh, when you when those guys step in the box against you, is there like a smile and a nod and, and a laugh, or is it uh, higher stakes? Yeah, it depends on the guy. Swanson and I, it's a little bit of a laugh. He's actually always hit well off of me. I don't know if he has any hits, but he's hit a bunch of balls hard. We got to look that up right now. He, I'm he probably up. has one or two hits. I, can look I mean, yeah. I'm thinking about you and Dansby facing off just like two young, good-looking studs. Yeah. It was fun. It, it I love fun. that. I'm pumping your gas all day, Walker. I'm sorry. I like it. Uh, who else would we face? Brian Reynolds. I don't know if – I did face Brian. Brian had a really good year. With yeah. Pittsburgh. All right, Dansby – Let's see. Looks Damn like it, you got it before me. Five at bats, ground out, line out, single, fly ball, line out. But all of the outs in the air. Baseball Reference says they were deep. Yeah. So as I said, he's he's one for five. So I'm technically winning, but he has hit the ball well. Yeah. Outs You're now. winning. Don't let him yeah. celebrate hard hits. <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of the game. Trevor can tell you. You know. Yeah, guys. No. <laughs> so the results driven game I, I thought <laughs> I, I thought I faced you so I've been telling people for a long time like dude Walker's nasty old. I faced him <laughs> and when I was with the Phillies he K'd me I got double switch for in the second inning because that's where my fucking career was at at the point but it was Ross Stripling who also Ooh. is nasty and yeah. he threw a hammer to me yeah. they double switched really in the good, second inning really good breaking ball yes they did it was in Philly I got to start. I'm like super stoked. You know, I've been on the bench for a long time. <laughs> Throw me out there. I strike out. I'm like, all right, but you know, I, I feel like pretty good that at bat. And then our starter just kind of like, yeah, I mean, he was having a bad day. Huh. And Is that is 17 or 18? Uh, 18. 19. July 18. 23rd. 
2018. <laughs> I saw, and I saw Gabe come out to like make the pitching change. I'm like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get double switch for in the second inning. I'm going to be super wow. embarrassed about it, but what are you going to do? And it happens. It happens. Happen. I got my first, I got my first big league win in Philly in 17. It's, it's a fun place little, to play. I've never thrown the ball well there except for that one day, but that was a vulture win too. Yeah. It's, it's a hitter's park, man. Yeah. Andre Aether went backside right off rehab. Which was kind of cool because I rehabbed with Andre for four months. So for him to come and hit a pinch hit homer and me get my first one was kind of cool for me. That's awesome. He's the kind what? of guy that probably doesn't remember that at all. But <laughs> in the homer, but it's what awesome. stadiums do you feel most comfortable in? Um, I've thrown one good game and one bad game in St. Louis, but I really like throwing there. Um. I liked Seattle a lot, surprisingly. I didn't think I would, but I really like Seattle. So what, what comes – what are you, you, like, evaluating when this happens? Just, like, general feel? Do mounds feel different, or is it the, the visuals? Yeah, the mounds, the mounds for sure. I think a lot of it is the bias of how you throw there. Yeah. So, yeah. like, Seattle, I threw the ball well, so it's a contender. You know, Texas, okay. I didn't throw the ball well, so it's not even a contender. It's out. Yep. Um, I like San Diego. I told you it's a results, it's a results driven league, you know? Yeah. You know what? I pretty much, no offense to the Rockies that just kind of, it's their disadvantage, but anywhere except pitching in Denver, I think I feel pretty decent about. Did you make your Uh, debut in Denver or just against them? No, I've just pitched in Denver a lot and it's just, it's the moon. Yeah. The balls don't do the same thing that they're supposed to do. Right. It's got to be such a strange feeling for a pitcher when your ball, you're used to it breaking and it yep. doesn't break. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one for sure. But I do, at some point, you kind of give their pitchers a little bit of credit for oh, yeah. staying, staying healthy there and succeeding there. Staying sane, more so. That's tough. I gave up 13 hits in a game in Denver, which was not fun. <laughs> they should, some journalist should make a book. All the journalists that listen, someone write a book and called I was traded to Denver and then take all the pictures that have ever been traded to Colorado and they're just jot down their initial reactions. Like, yeah, was, <laughs> it'd be a pretty expletive written. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be like, you motherfucker. What the hell? Yeah. Little rated R. Yeah. What's, um, uh, we're talking about Ploof getting double switched out, which again, mm-hmm. that's one of my preferred stories. Let's, let's say you're, you're in a funky one. Maybe it's an extra inning battle and uh, maybe you have to hop out in the field. Do, mm-hmm. are, are you an Ooh. outfield pitcher guy? Do you, do you float around out there? Can you pick it somewhere? Um, you know, what's interesting about that in Miami last year, I was told I was going in the outfield Okay. and I thought it was kind of a joke and didn't really think it was going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And even went and put on my spikes. So (laughs) I was ready to roll and then it was yanked out from under me. So, you know, I have a pretty steadfast rule on that. If you, if you tell me and you know that I put my spikes on, I'm going in. That's a serious thing for a pitcher Uh, to put their spikes on. Yeah. So (laughs) after that, after that, you know, experience, I made it very clear to, to our manager that, hey, man, like, don't tease me with this again. If you keep <laughs> bikes on, I'm going. Oh, man. I got you more as like an infielder, but I could see I kinda, shagging leads to a better outfield position maybe. Yeah, you know, I, play, I played every – I think I got to play every position for my high school team. So, um, not that that matters a whole lot. Um, I would rather play the outfield if it's the big leagues. They yeah, just, just hit it. They hit the ball really, really hard. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm soft. I'm just saying I don't really need to be in the infield. I mean, pitcher, you're standing as close as closer than anyone. So, if anyone knows how hard they're hitting them. Yeah, Yeah, Trevor Story got me on a comebacker two years ago that broke two of my ribs. So, that one was good. Oh, shit. Did he really? Yeah, 108, I think, exit. And it hit me square in the ribs. So, that was a good one. How long did that bruise last? The bruise wasn't that bad. It was the fact that I pitched for another month before we knew they were broken. Damn. So that was that was fun. We actually figured it out against Atlanta. I came out for the sixth inning and was throwing 
and I've been throwing <laughs> close to my normal velocity in the fifth. So they just kind of shut down on me. Damn. They broke them into no fun. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, all-star game guitar from Cleveland. Yeah. What was that like? I mean, it's your first first season that you break camp with the team and mm -hmm. you get selected to the all-star game. I and mean, what was that moment like and how did, how did whoever tell you? Yeah, that was really cool. We were in Denver when, when Doc called me in and told me. And, you know, we had – some other guys had found out before me and we'd had kind of some talks because um, – Dave Roberts was managing that that game, so he's like, "Hey man, like, if there's anything I can do to try and get you in there? We will." And I'm still not sure if they snuck me in there or if I was voted in, but um, <laughs> obviously one of the one of the coolest experiences you're you're ever gonna have. Either way, um, I also think for me it was really cool. Kirsch got got back into the All Star game, and so us getting to go together. He got suit, which I was very thankful for, and um yeah it was just a really cool deal and you know outside of cincinnati cleveland's probably one of the closer ones to home so um you know got got to have a lot of family and all that stuff up there and i actually drove home the the night after the all-star game so i threw my inning showered got in the car and drove five out five five and a half hours home nice <laughs> what goes on in that drive are you i mean are you windows down cranking or, or no what my are you doing? my fiance and my two best friends were all asleep 90% of the ride oh, after no. I just pitched in the all-star game <laughs> and dead tired and we get home at like five in the morning and I had to, I had to do it all myself. That's, That's something right there, man. That was, I think they sold out on me a little bit. <laughs> they might've been, they might've been, you know, a little day drinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't for know. You all day. The all-star game's a long couple of days. I'll tell you guys that we, I, I never felt the way that I felt walking into that ballpark from a hydration standpoint. Mm. <laughs> it was as, it was as bad a, bad a situation as I had ever been in, in, in that respect. We've heard a lot of guys talk about that. It, you know, I mean, judge talked about it when he did the home run derby, then the mm -hmm. all-star game. And then like they had no off day. And he yep. was like, that's, he's like, I didn't get, Instead of a break, I had to do more. He, those weren't yeah. his words; these are mine. But you could. Yeah. He was saying around about that, and I mean, Jeter at the tail end of his career just said no. He was like one of the. It's a huge story. He denied the request because he was like, "I'm not healthy right now," and that's a grind. Right. I'm no, sure it's, it's worth. It's one it of the well. coolest things ever, but it, there is a lot that that is involved in it. Obviously, if I was a little more disciplined, it probably wouldn't have been <laughs> as tough on me as it was. But it was my first All Star game, so you got to let um, it go. I'm okay yeah. with the decisions that I made. The home run derby, I know, is just kind of a, for lack of a better term, a shit show. That's what I've heard from everybody. You're out you there. Yeah, I, I actually am not proud of this either. But I left after the first round of the home run derby. Um, that's okay. That's okay, dude. Well, Jock was still in it, so that's uh, I felt a little bad about that. I did watch it very intently on the television at dinner. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean it's all it's all a cool deal, man. It's a it was a fun weekend. Was there was, someone that you saw in the locker room, you know, in that all star locker room that you were like, Holy shit? Um, yeah, I mean DeGrom and Scherzer and the guys that I've watched obviously my, my whole life, but you know, I'm also fortunate enough to have a guy that's, you know, of that caliber in our locker room every day. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was it was just cool, and and then Rue got to start the game. It, there was just a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on for for our team there. Yeah, it was basically a Dodgers All Star team. I mean, how many guys did you have there? It was yeah, we had lot. five. Yeah. That's, that's and uh, you and Kershaw both pitched. Yeah, three Dodgers starters pitch, starting pitchers in the game. Yep, and Kershaw and I also both gave up runs. So when I came out, I told Doc, I said, "Listen, if you just would have kept us out of this, we may we may win this thing." <laughs> <laughs> our boy gary gotcha that's my dude All right sanchez yeah he, he got a little double down the line i think counts that's luck. he's got lucky <laughs> he got lucky all right jim keep your yankee bias out of here this is walking he got glaber to end the inning so we're all good i did i got lindor oh. in his home home ballpark too nice Ooh. oh that. Lindor. he's a stud oh, dude that one felt good after i had given up the run awesome all right man hey we appreciate you sitting down with us and chatting with us it was awesome yeah, yeah no problem 
Absolutely enjoyed it, guys. You're a stud, yeah. man. Always rooting All for right, you. Guys. I'm telling you, I talk about you a lot. Just don't be afraid of me if we ever meet in person. <laughs> no. But I'm a Walker That's, Bueller fan, okay? I like it. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. We'll see All you right. later. We'll, Thanks, we'll catch you later. Thanks, buddy. See later. You. And there you have it. That was the Trevor Plouffe trying to date Walker Bueller show. Gassing him up, Trav. I mean, I gassed him up. I really did. I mean, I knew I was going to. You think he was like a little freaked out by the end of it? I hope he wasn't. We all were a little bit, but I think he liked it. Okay. You know, whenever Walker and I cross paths, nice. I don't want him to run the other way. Compliments are nice and never sit on a compliment. And you, you did grow up. Did great. Thank you. I did think Jake said in the intro, a very dry sense of humor. Like there were some lines in there. I was like, oh, okay. He's good. You, uh, you got a little tasty on him, and that's fine. Um, normally, you critique me pretty hard when I'm like, hey, Lance Lynn, come to the office. And you're like, whoa, Jake, get off his dick. And you're out here literally like, wow, you and Dansby playing baseball. That's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Don't, it is hot, don't be like, yeah, okay. No, I, you, know, you know if there's anyone that likes that, it's Poppy. Um, I mean, it's, that's what you – if you're a baseball fan – you got those two studs facing off. That's what I want every day. That's why I'm out of the game, okay? Like, I was a little too old for the game. Back in the heyday, me and Walker would have been a nice little battle. I think the ladies would have liked that. But now, mm. you know, let those guys do it. We'll just talk about it. Walker's good, man. And he's also really fun to watch. And that's, you know, there's pitchers that only check one of those dots for me. Like, uh, Weaver. Jeff Weaver. I thought he was so fun to watch. Just the results were. Jeff different. Weaver? Like the old school Yankees Jeff Weaver? Yeah, dude. That's his your guy, huh? No, but he wasn't good for the Yankees, but his stuff yeah. moved like crazy. It was like, like just watching the pitches was fun. The results were bad. Walker, I like watching him, and I like the results. He gets both. He's a stud. And you, know you guys what? get the results, but watching him was kind of like, eh. I think we're going to be saying in a couple of years, because like, like Trev was saying, I mean, young stud in L.A., it's the Dodgers. Um, but, man, we, you know, we kind of forget that, and, you know, we, we joked about, you know, Friedman come on the line and pay this man. You know, he's, he's early in his career. But I think, you know, we, we talked about the, the horses and stuff. Like, I, I think we're going to, in 10 years, you know, Walker Bueller's going to, uh, I, I think he's going to be, he's going to shine a little more. Um, and yeah, you know, the GM being in the fantasy league, that's illegal. so messed up. Get out of here. It's, it's not too out of the realm of things. We've had managers, um, in coaches and stuff. I don't know about front office ever in ours, but definitely when you got guys that with brains like a Friedman, you probably don't want them in your fantasy league. You, you want probably the dumb, a good insight in into how he probably get good insight into his trade offers. I mean, maybe. I'm kicking those maybe. guys out right away. I want all the idiots in my league. I don't want any smart people in my league. I mean, dude, Jock, Jock Peterson was reportedly traded for like 48 hours this offseason. <laughs> like, imagine that. Like, you know, you just, you just moved me and my family. Like, I, I don't know. I think I, I, fantasy sports is nice and light. Like, let's, let's not do that. And he did rank the fantasy players on the team, which I thought was great because that – we. Definitely got to clip that out and put it out there to ruffle some feathers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was that? Daddy, Daddy Kershaw fronts, fronts stripling? Is that what we found out that's, there? That's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, Flaherty's backed by someone in your league, right? It's me and Jack. Oh, okay. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first time we ever met you. We were at a bar and you got a FaceTime from Jack Flaherty asking who you guys, who should we start <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah we it was a tough it was a tough uh tough year for us this year but usually we're pretty good too i i, lo I love fantasy football so all right you cool. got an, you got you got a facetime from flaherty i had a missed call from my mom it was uh we had some beers that was a good time simpler you stepped times. on my brother's shoes Trev, how you doing dude like you you've got everyone a little emotional on the internet today 
That was I do I I mean I was thinking about Hooters I don't know I mean dude that video that, is that Kyle probably made that that video with the under the the sad song underneath it, it the great. montage of us pretty funny I mean don't you miss the days where you could walk into a Hooters get forty ounce beers poured for you and just have some fun with yeah. the boys Yes miss it I don't know when we're gonna be able to do that next dude next year we got a whole tour bus I already have it planned. Mm. I'm going to be staying in scary nice hotel. That's a joke for people that don't understand that I was joking. But maybe. Okay. Oh, you! I thought you were serious. I, yeah. I mean, well, I, mean, I want to have a tour bus. I don't have it already. Right. We but will. if you have a plan, that's how shit happens. So a little worried yeah. now. Well, it's tour bus in Florida and it's a house in Arizona. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, for now the we're Zona doing house. both. Yeah. Yeah. The Arizona house, uh, you know, Families and significant others can just use it while we're out at the ballpark. Wait, that way we don't have, that way we don't we'll leave our families. We'll talk about the details later. Thanks for listening to Talking Baseball. Yeah, it's all it's all nonsense anyway. It's, none of this is official. I'm not bringing my family to spring training. You kidding me? They stay at the house, Trev, while we go watch baseball. Love you, babe. <laughs>